Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, I actually had just gotten like a third of the way through this and realized that my mic wasn't working. So that's fun. And I'm also like losing the daylight because I really, really love the way that natural light makes me look. So um, yeah, this is probably gonna be quicker than I intended, but let's try and keep it um, keep it fun. Um, yeah, that was not a very nice introduction. Welcome to my channel. Uh, if you don't know who I am, I'm Anne and I'm an author. Um, I am like doing this YouTube channel to talk about books and makeup and pretty much anything that I feel like. Today is books, if you haven't noticed in the title. And I'm obviously um, wearing the theme Harry Potter. I am not talking about Harry Potter today because I'm still waiting on my Harry Potter box to arrive, but whatever. <laughs> I'm ripping because I love this jumper so much. Um, yeah. I love to talk about makeup, obviously this isn't about makeup, but I tried some fun new makeup when I was doing, how many times have I seen makeup? Um, this is obviously not about makeup, um, but I'm really into my makeup, so I'll talk about what I'm wearing in another video. Um, anyway, um, I'm going to dive right into it because I don't want to lose the light, and hopefully it's not that the lighting's not going to go funny, but please be with me if it does. Thank you so much for watching, if you want to like follow me, make sure you follow me on Instagram, I love Instagram. Uh, and my reader group and stuff, if you care that I'm an author, if you've stumbled upon this, welcome, and I've got a lot of energy in me, I've got a lot of coffee, so I'm going to try and keep it calm, but I'm um, talking about books today, and this is literally, how you say, this is like part one of what I think is going to be <laughs> a lot, so um, I have these here, and I'm going to be talking about um, a lot more, but this is part one, this is in no particular order, I'm trying to build up my library here, so I will be, like, if this isn't in order of how I read them or importance or anything, um, but I will be talking about a few that I think are a must because I am, this is talking about my favourite books, but also, like, what books have made me into a better author as well because I do have a lot of favourite books because I'm a huge reader and, as I said in the video with no sound, you have to be a reader to be a writer and I'm sure there are people that, that are going to prove me wrong and there are people that have written books that don't, maybe don't, haven't read a lot, but I just don't think that, it's like being a filmmaker, but having never watched movies, I don't know, you have to consume the art, you have to love it, I think the passion really, really creates something beautiful, so, um, Stephen King said it, you need two things to be an author, you need to read a lot, and you need to write a lot, so, he is the king, and I have multiple books from in here, him in here, and I cut that down, so, um, Sorry if I keep looking over there, I'm checking the lighting because I just don't want the lighting to turn shit. Anyway, I'm going to jump right into it and I've already talked about this one but whatever. This is one of my mum and I's favourite paranormal series in the world. Um, it's by Dorinda Jones. Hopefully I'm going to pronounce everyone's names right. If I don't, it's just... Shit happens, you know? Um, as my uncle would say, shit happens on a big job. Uh, this is one of my favourite, favourite paranormal series. You're probably not going to be able to see it because we've got a lot of white going on here. But uh, it's first grade on the right. It's the first book in the Charlie Davidson series. As I said, both my mother and I love this series. It's so funny. The humour is so good. And um, that's a dog barking. Uh, the humour is so, so like on point. It's sick humour. It's sarcastic. It's... There's a dog trying to get in here. Um, it's sick humour, it's sarcastic, it's super funny. There's a romance element in this as well. And it's like, I don't know, people would seem to get quite polarised by the paranormal. Because even I have a paranormal series and my lovely dedicated readers are like, I bought it but I just, I don't want to read it because I just don't know about paranormal. And it is quite funny because people do seem to be very strongly against paranormal if they don't read it. But uh, this is hilarious, it's got a really good romance element, it's a really original concept and I think it has been really great for me as an author and as a reader. Um, I was going to read all the blurbs of these but now I don't know if I should because I don't know if I've got time with the lighting. But I'll quickly read like a couple of, I'll quickly read a couple of lines from the blurb. Um, Charlie Davison is a part-time private investigator and a full-time grim reaper, meaning she sees dead people really. And it's her job to convince them to go into the light. But when these very dead people have died under less than ideal circumstances, like murder, sometimes they want Charlie to bring the bad guys to justice. 
Complicating matters are the intensely hot dream she's been having about an entity who's been following her around all of her life, and it turns out he might not be dead after all. So yeah, if you like love paranormal and you haven't read this and you like like something a little bit lighter as well, I highly, highly recommend this. Um, the first of the many Stephen King, no, there's only three in here. I could do a whole video on Stephen King. I might actually do my favorite Stephen King books, but I'm going to talk about it quickly here. Um, this is the first book. This is a very old cover. And this is the first book in the Dark Tower series. I'm a huge fantasy girl. I love fantasy books so freaking much. And obviously Stephen King, if you haven't read him, you need to. He is a master of craft. Uh, it took me a while because I was like, I don't know, I, I don't want to read horror. And I was really bitchy about it, but what? I want to slap my past out in the face for even saying that. Because he isn't writing about horror and monsters. He's writing about like humanity and the way that he writes is just, I love him. I have like me and my fiance Taylor talk about it all the time. I never freak out about like celebrities or anything, but Stephen King would be the person I like cried and like drooled and turned into an absolute embarrassing mess because he's just one of the masters and he, I just love him so much. And the Dark Tower series, again, if you're into fantasy, it is so good. Do not watch the movie. Do not watch it. I don't care that I just, I was in it. I love him, but don't watch the movie. It is a travesty. But, um, it is so freaking good. I'll do, the, the first sentence of the book is so good. The man in black fled across the desert and the gunslinger followed. Oh, I need to reread this. I feel like I might even reread this now. Such, such, such a good book. A good series. And the ending to this series will blow your freaking mind. Uh, don't need to say anything else. Actually, I think this has got... A little purse. Oh no, maybe I didn't. I, when Taylor and I, my fiance, were doing long distance, we did this thing. We sent each other our favorite books, and I sent him this from New Zealand three years ago. This is this copy, and um, yeah, he's not read it. So I made him about that. Okay, this is a must. If you are an author, if you want to become an author, if you're thinking about it, you need to read this. This is Stephen King on writing. This is an author's bible. I'm quite dubious about writing books because I don't like being told what to do especially um I don't know with writing I did take a creative writing course as part of my degree and I didn't hate it but I had um let me put it this way I had a friend who loved photography she was so talented and she went to school for photography by the end of it she didn't want to pick up a camera just because of the way it was taught and all these rules and she it just drained away her passion and that's not to say there aren't some amazing teachers and all of that and amazing books beyond this, but I am just like, you don't want to get bogged down too much and what you should do and what's right and blah, blah, blah. I, I just think it will take away your natural talent. So, but this is so good. I feel like I just yelled. My mum even read this. She's not an author, but she, um, <laughs> but she had surgery. <laughs> And I was not in the country and I was texting her to make sure she was okay. And this is when she was on a lot of medication. She's like, oh, I'm fine. I've decided I'm going to start a blog and I'm going to write a blog. And that was just really funny because that is not my mum at all. So anyway, she read this and she loved it. It is, a, you need to read it. It is the best book I'm writing out there, which I know is a bold statement, especially because I haven't read them all, but I don't need to. I have this and I think you just have to read this if you are thinking about becoming an author, even if you're an author now and you feel confident in your craft, just read this. It is such an inspiration and he's such a great storyteller. I have the biggest crush on Stephen King, like an intellectual crush. Again, another one. This is The Stand by Stephen King. This is probably my favorite book of his, apart from Under the Dome, which I really, really like too. But this, I am a huge sucker for apocalyptic books. And this... I'm actually going to reread this. Um, oh my gosh, my nails, you guys. These nails are insane. I re, I just put them on, especially for this video, because they're a mess, and now they've just got dried glue all over them. Oh my god, and I just realized that. That is so bad. Oh well, whatever. Um, yes, the, st the Stand by Stephen King. I know, it's a monster. It's this big. Uh, it is such a good, such a good book. Ugh, like, I can't even... I can't even speak, but this is my favorite, favorite, favorite apocalypse book. Uh, it's just so freaking good. Uh, I'm going to quickly um, read a little bit of the blurb. Uh, 
A patient escaped from a biological testing facility unknowingly carrying a deadly weapon, a mutated strain of the superflu that will wipe out 99% of the world's population within a few weeks. Uh, it's the, it's, I don't even know how else to talk about it, you just need to read it. It's one of my favourite books and if you like apocalypse books, if you like Stephen King, if you like long books, if you just like to read and you look are looking for something, uh, really, really highly recommend. Well, I feel like I'm getting through this quite well. I probably could have added more, but I wanted it to be kind of like a snappy video because I know my other ones have been a bit longer. Um, I know I feel like I probably might put a few eye rolls on this, but I don't care. I wish I had um, her other one, which I'll put in my next installment, but um, this is Eat, Pray, Love by Elizabeth Gilbert. So for the longest time, I put off reading this because I had this weird like aversion to it because everyone was like talking about it and it was so popular and my fiance Taylor is the same with movies if something's popular he doesn't want to like doesn't want to watch it that's why he doesn't like Harry Potter or doesn't want to watch it which is like a travesty in my opinion but on um, my little brother he was quite funny when we were talking about it he's like you're popular for a reason you're really good and it's true like this book I read this before I started writing when I was actually backpacking around Europe if you haven't heard about why I did that, then I did talk about it in like my introductory video to YouTube. Um, but I was very lost and was kind of like by myself, uh, traveling through Europe and just like experiencing life. And I read this in, I think in Portugal, I did. No, of all places I read this in Ibiza or Ibiza in Spain. And um, yeah, her writing is just top notch out of this world specifically for um helping writers i think big magic is right up there with on writing by stephen king i don't have it but i'll get in and talk about it in my next installment of this video but this is such such a good read a, such a good read for creative for spiritual people for maybe people who are a little bit lost for adventurers i this is popular for a reason you guys and i know it's like it's got this like stigma almost because it's so popular you almost don't want to read it. I know how that feels but please read this. It is so freaking good. She is a master storyteller. While I'm talking about um, books for adventurous and spiritual souls, I had to, had to include this. This is another monster. It's a thick one but I like thick books. Um, this is Shantaran by Gregory David Roberts. Now I had not heard of this book until I was walking on the Camino. I'm going to do a video about that. I walked across Spain and did a spiritual pilgrimage when I was very at a crossroads in my life and it was the best thing I've ever done. But I'm going to do a proper video on that. Anyway, uh, a lot of the walking time was spent talking about books. And the, it was quite funny because the, the, book, ugh, the books varied because you're walking with people of different ages, of different cultures, of different everything. It's like all walks of life are coming to this really beautiful, beautiful journey. And... Um, the books were changed apart from this. This is the book that, without a doubt, different age groups, different everything, was the thread that ran through all these different people I talked to. They said it was the best book that I've read, um, especially because you're, you know, you're on a journey about spirituality and philosophy, whether you're religious or not. I'm not um, necessarily religious, I'm way more spiritual. But this book was talked about so much, so I bought it. And it did take me a long time to read. I'm not going to say this is a book you want to read in a week. Maybe you will. But for me, I didn't because I like I put it down and then like three months later, I picked it up, which I am not known for doing that. I'm definitely um, a binger in eating and reading. Um, if I love a book, I'll finish it in a day. But with this, it was quite, it's very heavy. It's heavy on philosophy. It's heavy on subject matter. The writing is beautiful, but it's quite dense. Um, so it did take me a while to finish it, but again, for my writing, for everything, I found myself stopping and opening up my laptop and writing because this inspired me so much with the way that it talked about life and people, and it's, it's just a really, really good book. This is such a great read, um, really, really think anyone, as I said, from all walks of life, you are going to find something different in it. That, that speaks to you so I think that one is a must-have okay I think it would be very hard for me to say my favorite book of all time because I have read so many books and I have favorites for different reasons and different kind of 
points in my life and everything, blah, blah, blah. But if I had to narrow it down, this would be very near the top, if not at the top. This is the Bronze Horseman by Paulina Simmons. Simmons or Simons? Simons. Ah, uh, gosh, this book. It is a beautiful, beautiful love story. Uh, an epic. There is three books in the series. He's the Bridge to the Holy Cross and the Summer Garden. But this, I have reread re re this so many times. This is a um another copy, but my original copy at home looked like the pages were falling apart. That's how much I read it. It is so 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 beautiful. Oh my gosh. Um, it is about the World War Two in Lenin Leningrad. I think it's called, and uh, it's just like. The history is so rich, the writing is so rich, everything about this, it's so, so amazing. I'll quickly, um, quickly read a little bit about it. Um, it follows the lives of two sisters, Tatiana and Dasha Metanova, who, um, who share a single room in a cramped apartment with their brother and parents. Their world is turned upside down with Hit when Hitler's armies attack Russia and begin their unstoppable blitz to Leningrad. Yet there is light in the darkness. Tatiana meets Alexander, a brave young officer in the Red Army. Strong and self-confident, yet guarding and mysterious in a troubled past, he's drawn to Tatiana and him, and she to him. Starvation, desperation, and fear soon grip the city during the terrible winter of the merciless German siege. Um, I'm not going to say too much more because I don't know if I'm even going to keep these in, but Oh my gosh, I feel like I need to reread this again. It is so, so, so beautiful. Oh, um, yeah. If you're a romance reader and you haven't read this, then like go and buy it right this moment. You will thank me. I want to actually say, if you pick up any of these books and you like them, please let me know. Please comment. Please message me. And if you have already read them, please also comment. And if you have any suggestions for me, just comment. Just have a, have a conversation with me. Um, I'm going to take this off. I freaking cannot deal with these nails. Okay, I just spent like way too long trying to get this freaking sticker off. I'm not sure what I've cut out, but I swear all booksellers putting discounted freaking stickers on the covers of books, it should become illegal. It is a crime. Far out. Why would anyone do this? And I think I've made everything worse. Jeepers creepers. Next up is um, Nora Roberts. She's up there with Stephen King for me, and I honestly think I will do my Nora Roberts, my favorite books by Nora Roberts, because there are just so many books that I could have put in here. And um, yeah, so I'm probably gonna do a whole video dedicated to Nora Roberts, but I wanted to put this in here because this is one of my all-time favorites. This uh, reading Nora Roberts, I am a bit of a late reader, but holy crap, she's really, really influenced my writing. And not just her story, she had a wonderful article online, I can't remember where it originated, but it talked about her process and um, her writing and how she has written so many books and it was just so eloquent and so well written and it was really inspiring to me as an author because I go through phases of, I don't, like, I, think, I feel like it's laziness, I feel like it's laziness mixed in with like, um, you know, just creative and mental health and all of that. And I do go through phases where I just don't write for whatever reason. And like that article that she kind of said, pretty much like, don't give yourself excuses. Like this is your job. And it was so inspiring. I'm yet to perfect that. Like I'm a human being. I can't like, I don't know. I don't have excuses. I just need to get my shit together. But um, anyway, that article is really great. If I can find it, I'll link it down below. But this is, I think, my first read by her, but it stays in the top, top, top shelter in place. It is my favorite book by Nora Roberts, I think. I have a few others, but this is, this is a really, really beautiful book. Um, oh my gosh, I love it so much. It is about, I was just trying to find like the blurb, but it's not in here anywhere. It's pretty much about um, a mass shooting and it's obviously very, very tender subject subject matter, but she's written it so beautifully and so uh, respectfully, and I just, I really, really applaud her for writing this book because it's about um, a mass shooting, and then it fast forwards to, I think it's 15 or 20 years after it happens, and I don't want to give too much away, but it is a romance, and it's a thriller. She does beautifully at m meshing those two together, 
I'm writing like a romantic thriller at the moment and I am struggling with like it's it's kind of hard I will say and she just makes it look effortlessly effortless and easy and reading one of her books for me is like like putting on like a cashmere sweater I just feel like it calms me um, if my anxiety is bad if I feel like um, just off I read her Nora Roberts book and I just it really heals me so if you haven't read Nora Roberts then you need to rectify that immediately even if you're not a romance um, author I I feel like you're gonna if you're not a romance reader I feel like you're gonna really really love Nora Roberts she is very very close to Stephen King in my opinion with her talent with her storytelling ability with just her dedication to her craft so shelter in place if you are a Nora Roberts reader and haven't read this please please read it it is so freaking good all right okay i think i need to speed through because my battery is going to die and i'm also going to like expire under these lights um next up please don't let the cover put you off um i definitely let the cover put me off my mum actually got this huge this was years and years ago she got this huge package of all of these books with these covers and i was just like what is happening but she persuaded me um, to read it. Quick uh, side note here, my mum is the whole reason why I'm here. She has a love, love, love of reading and she passed that down to me and that is why I'm an author because she has such a passion for books and a lot of my favourite books are because of her. Um, but this is Wizards First Rule by Terry Goodkind. It is part of the um, Sword of Truth series and if you're a fantasy reader then you probably already know about this. It is a beautiful set of books. There's romance that threads through it but I will probably say this is my favourite fantasy series of all time. Um, I don't want to like go on too much because I feel like yeah again a fantasy is a very niche um, kind of reader group and not everyone is into it. But yeah, Wizards First Rule, it is a romance at its core, I believe, with some excellent world building and writing into it. So if you haven't read this series, highly, highly, highly recommend it. Now, I probably should have put this in um, my like indie author favourites, but I really, really wanted to include Kristen Ashley as one of my books that have made me into a better author because honestly, she is why... I started writing romance and figured out how to self-publish. I will say my first book was, um, did emulate a lot of her kind of qualities and all of that. And I got a lot of comments about that, but I was obviously just learning and all of that. But um, she is such an awesome, awesome romance author. She, again, it's like Nora Roberts. If I kind of, if I want to just feel like good and relaxed and not have to think, I pick up one of her books because she just, a lot of people, um, don't like her long descriptions of everything but I'm like no tell me more what was the outfit like what color was her hair how many rings was she wearing how was the house decorated I've definitely turned that down a little bit in my books but I would describe everything if I could um I love it and I love like Kristen Ashley she's awesome I love she she has a formula to her books sure but it really works to be honest her earlier books are my favorite I'm not a huge fan of the later ones that being said um she I can't even remember the name of the last I think it's called The Hookup, one of her later ones, and I really enjoyed that. But again, she's a master and the, a queen of the romance industry, uh, indie romance industry, I think, and love her or hate her, I, I think she's very talented and she's just, she, I think that's another thing, there's not a bad thing about having a formula to your books, and I really like knowing, like with Nora Roberts and with Kristen Ashley, I can open up a book and I can know what I'm going to get. I know what I'm going to feel. I know the story isn't going to be the same, but I know what to expect. And that's very, very comforting to me. And it really, really helps me, especially when I'm having trouble read, uh, writing. Sorry, A Nora Roberts read really just, it refreshes me. And it, it, it gives me a sense of kind of motivation and calm and just, yeah, I, I don't even know how to explain it, but one of my main things which I haven't been doing enough of lately is reading when I'm stuck. Uh, it's not waste, I know, one of my really best friends actually, she once said to me, oh my gosh, I can't, you know, I feel so lazy reading. And I'm like, how could you ever feel lazy reading? And it's like a workout for your mind and your soul. And it, it for me, it's just the one thing that is without a doubt going to make me feel better and going to make me a better author and going to make me a better person. And I definitely make a lot of excuses to 
not to read these days, but I know especially as an author you need to, you need to do it for so many different reasons and not just to like chill you out because I know I get so worked up and I'm like, I'm so behind, blah, 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 blah. Like right now I am so behind on my book, but I can't rush it and I just, like the more you stress out about things, the worse it's going to get. So I can sit at my laptop and just write shit or maybe I could read like a book or a few chapters and it really, really helps me. So I definitely wanted to talk about my favorite books because to me, being an author, you need to have um, a love of reading, honestly. I hope this wasn't too rambly and like crazy, but um, I really, really want my channel to be more than just makeup. I want it to be more than just one thing. I want it to be a place where um, all of my, you know, different readers can find videos that they like and they can relate to. And hopefully I can attract some new people that might think I'm like a cool weirdo because <laughs> that's my head. Um, so yeah, I definitely want, don't want to put myself into a certain box and so you can only talk about this, you can only talk about that. Uh, I want to talk about whatever I want and I want this to be a place for that. So I'm going to do probably a part two and probably a part three of this, these, and then, um, I'll go on to my indies and then I'll definitely do like my favorite Nora Roberts, my favorite Stephen King and all of my authors who I read a lot of, if you guys are interested in that. Oh my gosh, these nails are the devil. I... My camera just died and I just tried to replace the battery and it took me about a thousand years. And that's probably just a sign for me to hurry up and get writing and stop blathering on. But thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you feel beverage, um, comment if you want and let me know what kind of stuff you want, to, want me to talk about. I really actually love, love, love doing this as I said about a thousand times in every video that I do. It's so good to me. It's so, so much fun even though... It is frustrating sometimes figuring everything out and um, yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.